Today we need to get into an apology that was made by Suga and what happened there. We also need to get into people saying that he might have reacted badly after the cancel Suga trend occurred. And then we have people saying that Hybe is mocking J-Hope and all of the members of BTS. So you definitely need to Dave Desai, hater or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on and make sure you join us fangirling on Patreon and let's go. Now, it wouldn't be a promotion or a promotion cycle without people saying that it was done incorrectly. So recently, as we know, J-Hope got to release his album and his song, and people are not happy with how it's been released and how it's been promoted. Now, this is one of those things where no matter how a label will do it or how their team will decide to promote something, it's never going to be enough because the fans or the community literally spend the entire day or hour or their entire weeks thinking about how our promotions should be done. So when they see that the BTS members team aren't doing that, the community gets upset. All I have to say about this is if you believe so strongly that a specific way of promotion needs to be done, then go apply to do that job. Go become BTS's publicist, go work for Hive, work your way up the corporate ladder, and maybe one day you'll work with BTS. But the bottom line is the people who work around BTS and the people who work in the label are people who have many years of experience. They're typically not people that get starstruck very easily, and there are people that are doing this as a job. Of course, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily really good at their job, but it means that they're treating it like what it is, a job. So to expect them to spend 24 hours a day constantly thinking about BTS and just thinking about promotion is a very unrealistic expectation of people. Because what if an article were to come out that Hype treats their employees really badly because they expect their employees to work 24-7 and come up with really good concepts and promotional things and just never sleeps? I think the community would be upset that BTS is on such a label. They would accuse the label of doing such harsh practices with the artist and the label that would result in a bad press for the artist as well. So to expect that each employee is going to dedicate their entire life to BTS as if they don't have a family, they don't have a life, they don't have anything else to think about is extremely unrealistic. And there are people, of course, who are a part of the community that have families, that have jobs, that have all those things. And those people, bottom line is, they're not on the internet complaining about these things all the time. They have tons of things to do as a parent or as a mom. You can tell that being a mom and all that stuff is a full-time job on its own. Those people that are complaining are people likely who have nothing else going on and want to complain about how the employees need to dedicate their entire life to BTS. But the bottom line is those employees do have a family, they have to go home, and they don't want to just dedicate their own life to celebrities when they have their own life and life goals that they want to achieve. And bottom line is you should too. Your life goal can be things that matter to you, things that are important to you, like your hobbies and all that sort of stuff. And it can also, at the same time, be supporting artists that matter to you. But your entire life should not circulate around an artist. You should have something else going on. So basically, there's a lot of people saying that J-Hope's new release, as well as Jungkook and V, and all of them don't get specific playlists. So what are the playlists and what is this about? So other labels within and under Hive all contribute to this idea of specific playlists or things that can help promote the release. Things like an automatic playlist where it's just all of the artists, music and fans and whatever can kind of loop that and all of that would count towards the chart ranking of the album. However, there are accusations that Big Hit would not do anything like that and even accusations that Big Hit is really lazy and does the bare minimum. Now, I can't explain specifically why or if the accusations are true and if they actually don't make a playlist because sometimes the community just doesn't see it and then they say that it doesn't exist. So I don't know for sure what the actual situation is. But what I can say is if a label is choosing not to do some of their smaller things, they have likely decided that those things actually don't contribute that heavily to the success of the release of the song. So there's no point in wasting some employee time and resources to do that because that time and resources could be use for other things. So in the time that it might take an employee to create a playlist, they could be sending out a couple more emails to media sites to get more interviews, in which case what is going to be more beneficial, the interview or creating the playlist. I think this goes back to the idea that the community likes to think that the chart rankings and all that stuff is just from the community. And a lot of times when a song is initially released, that is the case. A lot of people from the community buy right away from the first hour or whatever it is and help the song shoot up right to number one. However, once everyone has already bought the song, you can't really rebuy the song and there's things that are put in place by these chart companies to prevent people from rebuying the song because they want to see the truth of how many people are currently buying this song. So ultimately what helps the longevity of a song and for a song to stay on the charts and keep staying on the charts is actually not the community 
buying stuff, but people who are not part of the community, brand new people. So while the community can take credit for the initial ranking in the charts, they can't take credit if a song has been ranking for the last six months. That is obviously from the fact that new people who have never heard of the artist before are finally getting to hear the song and buying it. In spite of what people are saying, I don't think this is the label trying to mock the BTS members by not promoting them and doing the bare minimum. I don't think that that's the case at all. I think that they have different priorities and oftentimes those little things that the community likes for the label to do are not really always the that important for the success of the song. And the label has to worry about the things that are going to be the big hitters. Also, if you want a playlist and you want those things done, then just create it. It takes like 10 seconds for the community to create something like this. I'm sure the label's also aware that the community would probably do it anyway. Of course, it's very cute to know that the community has the artist back. There's other moments that are absolutely hilarious recently that people have been retrending and retalking about. This is another way to support the artist, by the way, by keeping their name fresh and keeping the community's social media feeds full of BTS content. Recently, there's been a funny apology that's been going around, and I want to talk about that. If you're unfamiliar with one of Suga's new shows, it's called Sushi Talk. This is his talk show, and he brings on guests and stuff, and one of the guests he bought on was a member from the group 17, Hoishi. Apparently, one of the trends that BTS created was that at the end of award ceremonies, they would perform their songs with a lot of backup dancers to make it seem extremely flashy. Hoishi mentions that this is something that is expected of him and his group now, and so at the end of award shows, they have to do this. And he was talking about how difficult this was, and it was kind of something new that they didn't have to do before. Sugar heard this and very quickly interjected himself and apologized in a joking way to say that he was very sorry that BTS has changed the standard and did this, saying he was really sorry for all the things that BTS has done to K-pop and that they shouldn't have done that. I don't think that he's done anything particularly bad. Obviously, he's just raised the standard, and I think that that is something that should be done that a lot of people in the industry should do. It creates good art, it keeps things fresh, and it keeps things interesting for always seeing the same thing thing, or if the bar gets lowered, which has kind of been the case for American music for a long time, the bar just keeps getting lower and lower. I don't think that that would be a good standard to live on, which brings it into the next story. Apparently recently, Shuga was trending online, and for something very interesting. If you're not aware, he recently had a documentary movie. The movie was going to be aired all around the world, so anyone who hasn't been able to experience his tour would be able to just buy a ticket to the documentary and sort of watch it. It was supposed to be streamed all around the world, and when these streaming locations came out, people were very upset as one of the places that it was going to be streamed in was going to be Israel, as people think that this supports a lot of the situation that's going on over there and the bad things that are going on over there. People are objecting and saying that the label needs to rectify this and not stream in that location. This became such a big deal that people were tweeting out the label to cancel Sugar's documentary. Keep in mind, his documentary, the title has his name in it, so when people trend the word cancel followed by the documentary name, it's going to appear in the trending as cancel Suga. And I believe this was trending worldwide for a little bit. People were saying that Suga probably would have a really bad reaction to this and wouldn't be happy at all. And others were hoping that he wouldn't see this and there is a chance that he wouldn't see this as I don't think he would just go on Twitter. But there's been news reporting on this now. So maybe he has been aware and I think he is aware that there are people who are objecting to his streaming location. However, we don't know how much he's able to do behind the scenes and we don't know if he's even able to call the shots and say not to do it. There was definitely a lot of people who were really upset about this and were very angry that there were haters trending this and all that sort of stuff. I think what a lot of people fail to realize, I think it's not just the K-pop community, I think there's the community all around the world that likes to just jump on things at first glance. They don't like to look into things or really figure out what's happening because a simple just like even reading the tweets within the trend would tell you that cancel Shuga is actually not about Shuga, but it's cancel the documentary. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for the comment right here. Love you. Bye.